Hey, 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 hey. How's everybody doing today? Come on in. Let's jump inside of Unity today. It's been a while since we've live streamed actual game development. So I'm excited. I've been thinking about this all day, honestly. Um, because frankly, I wanted to get to a point in development with Twisted Tower with my team where I felt like I could move back into the production side of things as opposed to the direction side of things. Because that's what I've been spending a lot of my time on is direction as opposed to um, actually production. And I feel distant from it. And honestly, I feel sad that I haven't been inside of Unity in a long time. Um, I think it's been maybe five, six months since I've actually been truly deep, deeply integrated inside of Unity because I've been spending so much time in the direction side of things. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. And by the way, I wanted to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to the new students who joined full-time game dev yesterday. And by the way, I am sponsoring today's video. I'm the sponsor of my own video. Uh, <laughs> and that is with um, full-time game dev. So big, uh, huge, huge uh, thank you to Sean and Finnegan, Leonardo L, I'm just gonna say L, <laughs> Sammy A, Jose Rodrigo, Zarita Delgadillo. That's a, that's a beautiful, really long name, Peter V, uh, Jort, Jort, uh, and Austin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And by the way, guys, if you want to check out Full Time Game Dev, check it out below. It is still on sale for Black Friday. 50% um, off. There are six days left. The cool part about my program is it's freaking huge and in a good way, meaning it's not overwhelming. It's step by step. You're going to learn everything I know about starting a profitable game studio. And yes, if you're skeptical, my. <laughs> I say that because when people peddle online courses, they don't even do the stuff they teach. I actually do this. This is my this is my full time gig, which is running a game studio. So I teach you how to do it, um, whether it's Unity, Unreal, or Godot. And also, hey, best part is you're also going to learn the business side. This is super duper important. Learning the business side of game dev is honestly, in my opinion, more important than the technical side. You're going to learn all the technical stuff but you're also gonna learn how to do Kickstarter campaigns, how to secure six figures from a publisher with just a demo. And yes, it is possible, it is not a gimmick. I promise you, I've done it multiple times. How to hit this, the new and trending tab in the Steam front page, right? Um, and so much more. Massive program, uh, 4,000 students worldwide. And if you are a student, let me know in the chat what you think about the pro program. I love when you guys show up in the chat so say hello, I will see you guys on the other side. By the way guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free, it's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that, use it however you want. It's my treat to you, yeah. Okay. All right, so what are we working on today? That's the question. Hey, who is that? Wow, look at that bicep. We're working on clawfoot tubs today. We're working on an old telephone. We're gonna add some cobwebs. We're gonna add a fire extinguisher, and we're gonna add a mannequin, and we're gonna add some hanging ivy. Wow, Thomas, that sounds like a lot. It is if you're not smart about development. So what we're gonna do is after I drink our brown juice, we're gonna open up Turbo Squid, Sketchfab, and we're gonna start knocking out these assets, okay? There's no reason to make everything from scratch. It's just not smart. All right, let's go. Come on, Thomas. Let's get things done. First things first, open up the dreaded, horrible Unity. Oh. Am I being snarky about Unity? Yes, I am. Granted, they could screw us over with their pricing in the future. They probably will, but I'm going to keep using it because I love it. Am I allowed to love the engine? Am I allowed to enjoy being inside of Unity? How many of you say, no, you're not allowed? How many of you say yes? Actually, that's a straw man. I'm not gonna straw man you guys. How many of you 
think it's great to keep using Unity. How many of you think it's a terrible idea to keep using Unity? Say Unity if you're okay with it, or say no if you're not. Uh, Unai says, is it worth buying your course if it's only for Unreal? No. It's not for only Unreal. It's Unity, Unreal, and Godot. All frickin' three, right? We've got a lot of no's in the chat, but we've got a lot of Unity's in the chat. Okay, Unity is opened. While Unity's opening, we're going to go ahead and start with our fire extinguisher. And I'm going to show you guys the process here of spelling things properly. Here's the thing, okay? When you're searching for your assets, you need to be thinking of the poly count, okay? <laughs> we don't want to uh, have something that's too high poly, so I'm actually going to just do low poly. Interestingly, though, um, sometimes Turbo Squid doesn't really do a good job at indicating if something's actually low poly. So we just want a simple, simple fire extinguisher. Let's take a look at the poly count here. This one's not bad. And I'm going to show you guys how to bring this into Unity, how to tweak uh, the texture, make a prefab out of it, add a rigid body to it, add your own code to it. I think that's fine. What do you guys think? That's a little intense there. Oh, good. That's an LOD. All right, cool. So we've got some low poly LODs. So we're going to go ahead and buy this. Please hang tight, guys, while I buy this. Okay. Buying a $16 fire extinguisher. Do you think it actually works? There's part of me that thinks there's probably fire extinguishers on Amazon that are 17 bucks. I could be wrong. Okay, uh, it is purchased. Yay! So let's go ahead and download this. Um, what do we want? Does anybody know? I think, oh, there's a lot of file types here. I'm going to go ahead and download the FBX, but we're going to convert it to a blend file. So there's, there's a variety of things you need to do to a 3D model to get it to look great in the context of your world, okay? Don't just start throwing assets into your project folder, okay? You gotta be a lot more careful than that because otherwise things can get really, really overwhelming. All right, so we've got our uh, FBX. Typically they have a textures folder, but that may be, there's a specular one, hmm, that might be it. Um, it's, it's weird because on, on Turbo, uh, Turbo Squid, sometimes things are really like the, it's not, um, what's the word? It's not particularly consistent. Okay, so we've got our FBX. We're going to open this up inside of Blender. Okay, so let's open up our Blender. And what we're going to do is, instead of dragging it into Blender, for some reason you can't just drag an FBX into Blender. And by God, I want it. I've been wanting this for a long time, and they won't freaking do it. I just want to drag it in there. Nope, not allowed not allowed so let's import the fbx here Bing! there it is okay it should be imported where are you uh fbx not supported oh it's a a c a s c2 fbx files are not supported okay let's go ahead and grab the obj see what i'm saying it's not as simple let's just type in fire extinguisher and by the way guys i like to store all of my um Anything I'm downloading, I just, well, <laughs> duh. But most of my files, to be completely honest with you guys, are just in the downloads folder. Because most of my files are temporary because I end up converting them into a blend file or a PSD uh, or, or changing the format entirely before it goes into the project. So let's go ahead and open up this OBJ. And what we're gonna be doing here is, um, ooh, this has the, good, this has the textures in it as well. Good, good, good. Okay, so OBJ is great. Um, so I'm gonna extract this really quick. Good, okay. Now we've got our textures, yay. We've got our, okay, good. And we've got our, 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 our um, uh, object file as well. So let's go ahead and import that. Import OBJ, go to our downloads folder. There it is. And go ahead and import this. Okay, good. So here's a good question, guys. How big should I make this, right? So we gotta think about the size, we gotta think about the rotation. 
we've got to think, and I'll talk about that in a second. We also think, have to think about the origin. Where do we want the origin for this guy? Okay. Or the pivot point. Well, if it's going to be attached to a wall, we want it to be on the side of the fire extinguisher. So there's a lot of stuff you got to take into consideration here. Um, okay, so what are we doing? Ah, yes. We're going to go into Unity here, and this is where we're going to be placing it. Now, if we were to place it in the scene, God knows what the size of this fire extinguisher would be. We want its scale to be 111 and look beautiful by default. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. And by the way, is that is that the correct? Let's double check the mesh here. Ah, uh, yes, not bad, not bad. Okay, so I think we're okay. Doesn't bother me too much. Looks uh, looks like it's not going to really conflict with our current art style. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up a um, file for our teddy bear. We have a Walker shooter pistol. Walker pistol. Let's open up this guy. And this is going to be our fella that we use as a reference point for the size. Actually, we're going to use the crate. That makes a lot more sense to me. So let's use our crate. So we have a crate small. We're going to open this up here. And we're going to paste this crate. If it'll copy and paste, that's, that's something about Blender that I'm not a huge fan of. But if we paste it in, hopefully it'll... There it is. Okay, so you can see... <coughs> oh, you can see here, if I scale this down, we can use the crate as our reference point. Does that make sense, guys? So there's our crate. And if I press Shift B, I can actually choose where we're focused here. I feel like if we hit play mode and take a look at this crate, I believe that's a crate small. Yeah. Let's put the crate here and hit play. And we're going to take a look and see um, how, how big this is relative to our world. First, first thing, uh, the most important thing when making a 3D game is you want to make sure. that you're, you have a good understanding of the scale of objects, okay? Okay. So, honestly, I think the height of the box, I think the height of the box is perfect, okay? So let's go ahead and just do that. Let's go to, I think probably about like this is good for me. All right, so there's our fire extinguisher. Now you'll notice that it's kind of off center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the origin to um, center of mass. Okay, so no, 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 I want, the, I want it to be right there, good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna, yeah, just like that, okay? We want it to be nice smack dab in the center for now. So let's do object, set origin um, to 3D cursor. So now it's smack dab on the bottom there, okay? Now the question is, do we want the fire extinguisher against a wall or do we want it to be on the floor? Um, who votes wall? Fire extinguisher should be on a wall. And who votes floor? Okay, if it's on a floor, we're gonna put the origin actually in a different spot. So who says floor? And by the way, we're not gonna create a whole casing for this. It's just gonna be sort of hitched against walls. All right, we've got wall. So what does that mean, fellas? Well, it means it's as simple as moving our 3D cursor right there. And I guess we could snap it, yeah? We turn on snapping. There we go. Snapped to that. Uh, it should snap to the vertex, but I don't think there's a vertex there. Okay, that's good enough. It's not my. How do I do that? Let's see here. Can I do? Can I do? Um, object set 3D cursor. How do I move my 3D cursor? Somebody tell me how to snap a 3D cursor to. A 
uh, an edge. Does anybody know? Shift S. Cursor. Hmm. Is it Shift S? Man. Can't remember how to do it. But that should be fine for now. So we're going to go to Object, Set Origin to 3D Cursor. Good. And so he's going to be snapping against walls, right? I mean, frankly, what am I doing? I'm fine with the origin being down there, okay? Whatever. It'll snap to walls properly. Um, yeah, right? We'll see. Let's go ahead and save it. And actually, we want to go ahead and apply the scale. Let's apply all of the transforms, except we want to make sure that the rotation along the X is set to 90, then apply the rotations, apply rotation, and then X, I'm sorry, and then rotation along the X, negative 90. That way, this should, we'll see, balance out. I could be wrong about that. Basically, Unity has a really obnoxious way of importing um, files. Uh, so let's go to our art. And what we're going to do, I'm trying to think of where I'd like to put this. It's not an interactive. It's mainly just for set dressing. Uh, environment, props. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new one. And I'm going to call it um, fire. It, how do I spell extinguisher? Good, there we go. And then we're going to call this fire extinguisher. Do you guys see how I'm being very precise about where I'm storing things, about the size of things, about the rotation of things? And also, we need to make sure we bring in those new textures. But I'm not just going to bring in any old texture. I'm actually going to open these up inside of Photoshop, and I'm going to save them as a PSD. What? Yeah, we're going to save them as a PSD. Um, so let's go ahead. We're going to call this Extinguisher Albedo. And I'm going to actually put it, create a new folder and call this PSD. The reason I'm doing this is because I like to be able to edit my Photoshop files on the fly inside of Unity. Um, glossiness is good, yeah. We, we want that as well. Um, this is going to be actually inside of the albedo um, of the of the fire extinguisher, okay? It's going to be in the alpha channel, just like that, okay? All right, so that's good. And I'll show you why in just a sec. And I know what a lot of you are thinking who don't make 3D games. You think, why can't I just import a model? Why does it have to be such a pain in the butt? With Unreal, it's pretty cool with the, with the marketplace where you can do that. Um, you can just sort of drag and drop a bunch of assets. Um, I'm a bit of a control freak when it comes to assets that come into this game because I want everything to have a very, like every, there's, a, there's, a, there's a whole system of how we do things. Um, the file formats, the scale of things, um, the origin of things, the rotation of things. Um, the normal map, we definitely need that. So let's go ahead and grab this. Uh, it's pretty flat actually, but I can guarantee you we're gonna create one though. Um, maybe not, but we'll see. So we're gonna save this as a PSD. There we go. Good. All right, what else? What else do we got, guys? Um, by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember you can, uh, glossiness is not correct. It's specular. We really want to put the specular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want the specular inside of the alpha channel. Um, so that is what we want. Sorry, not glossiness. There we go. Okay, so we're good here. We're going to close all of this, and we're going to close me as well. Um, let's see here. Let's open up... Um, our textures folder, go to our PSDs, and we're just going to grab these. And we're going to go ahead and open a new folder here. Open up our project. Go to our assets. Yeah, those of you just joining us, just remember this video is sponsored by me. It's sponsored my, my massive course with over 4,000 students worldwide. Um, and that is a real number. Isn't that crazy? 4,000 students worldwide. I'm just really, really honored that you guys would... would uh, Trust me to, to teach you how to start a game studio. Um, it's 50% off right now for six more days. I think there's around 55 seats left. 
So check it out below. If you're a student, let us know what you think about the program in the chat. Okay, so let's go to our environment. Um, props, and what was the latest one? It was the fire extinguisher. And look, watch, look how clean everything is. And I even like to go a little bit further here with how uh, neurotic I am about files. I want everything to match exactly as the file name. And I don't even know, like, honestly, I don't like using underscore. I like things nice and clean here. Okay, so pretty good. We've got our fire extinguisher here, um, and we've got our two textures. Um, so let's go ahead and go into Unity here, and hopefully everything will get uh, imported properly. Um, so let's go ahead and just type in fire extinguisher. How much you want to bet we already have one? Um, nope, we don't. So there is our fire extinguisher. Look at that. Okay, he's good to go. Wait, is that a different one? Yeah, I told you we had two. Um, here's the here's the one we just got. This one looks better. Um, and what we're gonna do? I told you we had one. Thomas, what were you thinking? And then let's drag in our new texture here. It'll create a material for us. Um, so there we go. And then we've also make. Let's make sure we. Uh, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's throw on the normal map as well. Now, guys, why on earth did I create all? Let's fix that. Why did I create all those PSDs? What was the point of that? So that we could double click anytime we want to make a change. Double click the fire extinguisher, opens it up, and make a, a lot of cool changes here. Now we could obviously use something like Substance, right? But if you're like me, you might want to just do it in Photoshop. So I'm going to do what's called asset flipping. Orangish red is the color scheme of the game. And this, guys, it's always important to keep an idea of the exact color scheme uh, you want to use in your game. Everything for me um, is, <laughs> I think color is, frankly, color in music is the most important aspect of a game's art direction, okay? So I have a very clear understanding of the color scheme of my game. And even the green here, I'm gonna worry about the green. We're gonna tweak that even. We use more of like a aqua, low saturated, darker green, okay? So watch this, suddenly it's gonna match. Look at this. So let's go up to our fire extinguisher. Guys, this is how easy it is to make a game. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest here and say that that's a little bit dishonest. <laughs> Um, there's a lot of work that went into this game, a lot of custom models, thank, thanks to Felipe. Um, so in terms of the, the team structure, I'm the art director, and so I, I put together art documents, and, and I use ClickUp, and, um, or, or you could use Monday.com or Trello, and I use that to create art direction for this game. And then I also go in and create textures as well, and, and, and um, sometimes I will do the assets like this uh, fire extinguisher here. Uh, but if you wanted to make a game just, just from simple assets, you could definitely do it. Um, so that's what, we're gonna, that's what we're doing for the, we're in the, technically we're in like milestone three, but we're in the fourth milestone, which is just polishing the crap out of this game, adding a bunch of assets and making it beautiful. Um, just so you guys know, just if you're curious, um, we're using, we're going to be transitioning all of our materials to tune shading to make it feel a little bit more like um, what's that game called, Valorant? Um, also, all these Gen Z games. Um, I sound like an old man, I know. Um, and just a very much more simplistic tune shading. Um, that's what we're gonna be using. So something like this um, is what we're gonna end up using, okay? Uh, with some rim lighting as well. It just looks so much better. It really looks gorgeous. Look at that. So you can, you can see why I would wanna go with this route. It just makes things look uh, that much better. Good guys, awesome. Uh, does anybody mind if I put on some lo-fi? Um, I hope you don't. We're gonna go ahead and turn on some lo-fi here. Um, epidemic. Lo-fi, epidemic lo-fi. Let me know if it's bothering you guys. Yes, I mind. All right. 
Well, I guess I shouldn't have asked your opinion because I really don't care. Um, all right, guys, let's make this a pushable object. What does that mean? It means adding a box collider. Ooh, and it wraps perfectly around. Good. It means adding a rigid body. Make sure it's not kinematic, fellas. Good, use gravity, good. And we're also gonna add a pushable object script. Guys, it's so important to have your systems in place so that you can quickly create a variety of different kinds of objects. So in this case, a pushable object is just something you can grab, okay? Um, it would be, wouldn't it be guys, wouldn't it be ideal if when you shoot this it sprays uh, steam? Oh boy. Thomas, you're setting yourself up for failure, man. If you don't do it, people are gonna be mad. Probably need to do it. But let's get this list done and then consider adding that at the end of the stream. Okie dokie, fellas. We got a pushable object here. Good, good, good. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the pushable object script from this. It's also a breakable. In this case, this is not going to be a breakable. So let's paste component values here. Good. All right. So let's double check and make sure that this is good to go. If it is good to go, then we're going to create a prefab out of it. Um, I'm not sure where we need to put that prefab, but let's see if it works. Okay. So this is why rotation is important, guys. We need to set up the rotation properly. Uh, currently, it's orienting itself in a really strange direction. I don't know why. Um, but it looks good. You could throw it. Okay, good. All right, so that looks great. I'm curious what's going on with the rotation. Um, what's What do we think is going on here? Let's double check. The rotation value is, let's just set it to, let's go ahead and apply the rotations first. Apply uh, all transforms. Save it. And double check here. Okay, it rotates like that, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna grab this, bring it right here, put that on there again. I'm gonna copy the pushable object script here, paste component as new, and then the rigid body as well. And I, I think maybe this will work. I don't know. This is where things get kind of painful for me. Um, Let's double check, guys. You ready to take a look here? Paste component. Thomas? Okay, let's throw, uh, no, we got everything, actually. We're good. All right, you ready to try it out here? Let's see the box collider. Yep, box collider's good. Here we go. Okay, so what we need to, it's getting set to zero, I believe. Let's double check its rotation here. Okay, it's currently set to, yeah, I believe it's getting set to, to, to zero. Ah, yes, Thomas. Okay, so here's what we need to do, guys. We need to first rotate this along the x-axis, negative 90. We need to apply the rotation. I'm telling you, freaking unity. Um, rotation along the x and then do positive 90. Save it. That should, it'll, it'll screw this up, don't worry. Um, and then we're going to go to this here. We're going to do it one more time. Select the original. Select the process here is such a pain in the butt. Um, but it will make sense, I promise. Oh, good. It adds everything uh, for us um, when you add the, uh, the pushable object script. Thank you, AJ. By the way, AJ wrote this script. AJ, this is a really good script, buddy. Um, and we're going to paste the, the pushable object uh, values here paste the values and we're also going to do a well let's let's double check that this works it should i'd be frustrated if it if it didn't work i wouldn't know what to do honestly okay it flips it around which is i guess is fine um yeah that works works for me guys ding, ding, ding. okay let's make sure it's set to the right sound this is gonna be very simple. Um, and by the way, the entire system here was programmed by AJ. Um, AJ is our developer and then also myself. Um, so we've, we've kind of 
come together and AJ's put together an incredible system and then I often come in and I screw it up. Um, so if we go to our tags here, I'm gonna just tag it as, which one do I wanna do guys? We'll do metal and we'll turn the sound on and we can take a look here. Hello Lentor, heated snail, null script, how you doing? Good. Okay, so here's what you can do, guys. If it's initially kinematic, we can then place it on walls, right? So that's the final thing we need to do here before we move on to the next object. See how quick that was? So we're gonna set it to is kinematic. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna, well, let's make it a prefab, okay? So here we go, fire extinguisher. Um, where is the <coughs> crate stored? Good, so we're gonna store this fire extinguisher here. Create variant. And why are we creating a variant out of this fire extinguisher? So that if we update the blend file, it will update automatically. Just as long as we're not changing the rotation or the origin or anything like that, we should be good. Okay, so let's delete these old ones here. Okay, we've got our fire extinguisher ready to go. And so now all we've got to do is go to our fire extinguisher variant. See how quick this was, guys? We just got to go, where did it go, you moron? There it is. And it, it should, ah, oh, good, there he is. Awesome. Okay, so we've got a fire extinguisher we can put on walls now. Pretty cool, guys. So just this very subtle, very subtle um, set dressing that you can do just to make things feel like it's a more lived in environment, okay? That's really all we're trying to do here. We can set the rotation to 90 here. And if you ever have a mistake where you're like, oh no, it didn't connect to the wall, all you've got to do is grab the vertice, snap it, there we go. And we can just push it up against the wall, okay? Let's make sure this works so they don't fall to the ground initially. But when we grab them, then they'll suddenly be not kinematic, okay? Yay! <laughs> Sweet! Yeah, they definitely need to, to spray. Um, but that's even, dare I say, potentially something we do after we launch um, with, a, with a patch. Because there's so much I gotta do. Um, Do the 999 plus warnings and 168 info logs have any concern to you? No, they do not. It is par for the course, in my opinion, when you're working with frickin' Unity. Unity, they've got this issue, watch this. <laughs> you search in the hierarchy AS and it loses its mind. Um, so <laughs> we've tried our best to figure out what is going on there and AJ and I have just concluded just don't search for stuff in the hierarchy. Um, <laughs> that's basically it. Hey Tuck Mac, how are you? Okay guys, what else? Well, we got the fire extinguisher done. Um, the mannequins are the next step. All right, so let's jump on over to Turbo Squid. And because I don't know how to type spell mannequin, I'm gonna Google mannequin and see, oh, that's how you do it, mannequin. Okay, one sec, hang tight guys. I'm gonna switch to my screen here. Oh. Okay, so these don't look like mannequins, do they? Of course they don't. We need like, ooh, there we go. I need like a bust with a head. So we're gonna, ooh, that one, that's great right there. But they need to be low poly. It, they all say low poly, which is just kind of concerning. But uh, generally speaking here, we could type in vintage mannequin. I want to be sure really quick that a 1920s man, there we go. That a 1920s mannequin, I just need it to have a head. Okay, so let's go ahead and head on over to Sketchfab. And we're going to type in vintage mannequin. 
Good, okay, we're a little bit closer to what we need here, guys. What do we think, huh? Come on. You can't come up with a creepy mannequin? What about creepy? That's great right there. But the problem is, it needs a head. Do mannequins have heads? They should, shouldn't they? Um, okay, last resort. Unity Asset Store. Okay. All right. Do we want to listen to Cult of the Lamb soundtrack? Yes or no? Anybody? Yes, Cult of the Lamb or Lo-Fi is no. So either Cult of the Lamb in the chat or Lo-Fi. Let me know. Okay, Mannequin. These aren't mannequins. I want like one with a with no legs. Don't they know that Thomas is right? That's kind of great. And it's free too, huh? Lo-fi is good. <laughs> okay, we've got kind of a a mix here. Well, guys, what do we do here? I want like a mannequin with a bust. Okay, let's type in creepy mannequin. Uh, that's close, but that is probably the ugliest model I've ever seen in my entire life. So no to that. Um, we're gonna have to make a call here pretty quick. There's only so much we can do with the time we have allotted. Realistic mannequins. Oh, good, good, good. Look at all these mannequins. That doesn't look like a mannequin to me. How many are there? The thing is, is I don't like downloading Unity assets because it gets put right into my folder and it becomes a mess, but I'll, I'll move it out. Um, guys, we're gonna make a gamble here and we're gonna gamble that these are good. So let's go ahead and buy. <laughs> That's the thing about the Unity Asset Store is it's always a freaking gamble. Um, so <laughs> let's just buy these and see what we get. I have to hide my screen because I don't want you guys to see my credit card. Okay. I know you guys would not use that information to your advantage. You would never do that, right? Uh, so let's check out here and see what we got. Hey, have you guys downloaded my, my free stuff below? There's a ton of free stuff in the description that just... It's going to help you make better games, so check it out. There's some free courses as well. Check those out. Okay, guys. Almost there, almost there. I want to listen to jazz. How about I don't take anybody's advice and I just listen to what I want to listen to? That's not good jazz, though. I need some cozy jazz. I almost don't care about getting flagged here. Okay, so we're gonna open this this up here, guys. We got a bunch of mannequins here. Um, so that's that's good. Uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. And hang on. I don't think it opened. Let's go to my package manager. Why are you not signed in? I've been signed in for years, and you decide to sign out. I can't, I can't. Why? Hang on. Sorry, guys. I need to sign into Unity. Okay, there we go. Go back to my package manager. Okay, mannequin. There we go. Realistic mannequins. Download. Now, we're not going to make the mistake... I'm telling you guys, it's so important. We're not gonna make the mistake of just throwing these into the game and saying, ah, oh, we'll worry about them being a blend file. We'll worry about the PSDs later. We're gonna be smart and we're gonna be precise about how we do things because why? We're wrapping up this game, okay? We're not in the 
the experimental phase at this point. We're wrapping this up, okay? And so what we wanna do is do things properly now that we know what the game is and now that we've got all the levels done. Uh, but we need to set dress and we need to add detailing, okay? Okay, so we got our mannequins. And what we're gonna do, because I'm so, so picky about my file structure, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it into the downloads folder. So now the mannequins folder is dead. We're gonna delete this and we're gonna slowly open up the ones that we really like, okay? Inside of Blender. Uh, delete that folder, good. And same, same process, guys, same exact process um, as the, the fire extinguisher. Uh, we have our mannequins. Um, we have our models here. Male, good. They're all FBXs, which is fine. Female, good. All FBXs, which is fine. Um, what I may do is combine all of these into a single blend file. Um, I might do that and then create variants out of each one. Um, or just find the ones that I really like. We've got our materials here and the damaged ones as well. That's good. Let's start with the, the female. Oh, good. And it's tempting. Here's, here's one of the most interesting temptations um, that I've had in a long time, or since I started making 3D games. The temptation is to use all of the assets. Why not just use them all? Well, you get overwhelmed really, really quickly. And so what I do is I like to pick maybe one, maybe two, and that's that, okay? So we're not gonna make the mistake of getting overwhelmed by all these different kinds of mannequins. Um, we're not making a AAA game, we're not making a highly realistic game, and so we need to be much more economical with our decision making. We have a list of 200 things we've gotta create for, this, for the set dressing phase of this game, so we're not gonna to worry too much about everything being used in this mannequins folder. So let's go to our models, we're gonna to go to female. We're gonna take a gander here that the seated one is the one we want. Oh, that's cool. She's rigged up too, which is interesting, isn't it? Oh, that must be the dirt and the grime. That's a weird. Oh, good. There's multiple pieces. Um, let's see. Is there a a stand? Okay, we got a T pose. We've also got one that's no rig. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the free mannequin and then this mannequin and combine them into one. And it is rigged, I believe, in Unity. Um, and I don't think I want it to be rigged. That's the thing, man. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab the T-Post one. This is gonna make sense, promise. I'm cool with just using the female one, honestly. Um, we're gonna take the one with the rig Good, okay, it's rigged up. Let's go to pose mode and see if it works. Good, it works. Oh, we can do lots of cool poses. I like it. Okay, so she works great. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a pedestal inside of this model here. So let's get the rig, let's keep the rig as it is. What is this? Some sort of IK thing. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into that free model, we, there was a free model. Let's type in um, mannequin and see if there's one. Let's see here. Okay, I believe it was here. Nope. There it is, this one here. So we're gonna download this one. It's worth the cost, I believe it. In, in my, it's my opinion that I would rather buy this now if it's for, is it, can I download you? Cracker Jacks. I really like that, but I can't download it. Do we have anything we can use? Oh, we need a coat rack. We could use a coat rack. Let's type in coat rack. Cause we can, we can kill two birds with one stone here. Um, yeah, 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 we can use a coat rack. Um, let's see here. We don't want to go too crazy. We want to try and match the style of our game. Let's be very, very uh, 
quick here. Let's see, go to our make sure we're our, our uh, make sure they're lo downloadable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we want to make sure the poly count's not too high. Can't be too crazy. Yeah, I don't like any of these. I don't like any of these. Let's go to uh, right here. Type in mannequin. Let's see if there's anything in the mannequin. Uh, no. Okay. All right. We're going to go to coat rack. And the theory here is um, vintage. Good. Okay. Look at this. A lot of them are the same. Uh, we're going to go to the poly count. Like, where's the freaking? Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, what's going to match in the game, y'all? Do we have a coat rack? Nope. Okay, we don't have a coat rack, so we definitely need one. Um, which one do I want to use? Some of them are a little too ornate. It's only four bucks, but it's ugly. I'm tempted to just grab this one, although there was one here that I didn't mind. It was super simplistic. When in doubt, I always just go with simple. But it's kind of ugly at the top. Hmm. And I can't buy this one anyway. Okay, what about uh, Unity Asset Store? Let's type in coat rack. Hmm. Okay, guys, we got to make a call here. This actually is great. There's a lot of different assets we could probably use here um, for the game. Yeah, I think I might be willing to take a gamble here. I don't really like that, though. It's just ugly. Thomas, make a call, buddy. There we go. This is great. We can make this work. Yeah, we can make that work. We might want to make the base a little bit bigger. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this, okay? All right. Add it to my cart. Five bucks. Go ahead and grab that. PayPal. Give me a sec, guys. Give me a sec. Use a lamp. We might have a lamp, actually. I don't think we have any stand-up lamps, which is interesting. Oh, there we go. Let's take a look here, guys. Okay, so we have this. No, I don't think that's going to work. These are all custom models that Felipe's created. Yeah, no. I'm fine with just with moving forward here. Okay, let's go ahead and move. Uh, just make the call and get, get moving. You guys know I'm a big fan of just making things happen. Now, we do have a process and we have a system. So I'm not just being completely chaotic here. We do have a process. Um, but that said, um, we want to... Uh, We want to be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quick with how we're doing things here. All right. Okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm downloading it really quick. Um, I'm going to download it and put it into a folder called wooden coat rack. And the first thing we're going to do is, um, cut it in half and apply it to the, to the mannequin. Okay. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, okay, let's go. So, oh, sorry, give me a sec, guys. I want to close out all these tabs. Okay. All right. Downloads folder. Wooden coat rack. All right. You guys ready to open this up? All right. So we're going to open up this FBX. And...
we don't want to include it. Okay, so let's first and foremost, let's get the, the mannequin completed. Okay, so she's ready to go. I'm going to save her. Actually, ha, make sure, Thomas. Let's open a recent. We're going to open up the crate. Um, better way to do this is to go to Unity here. Sorry, guys, one sec. Kind of a convoluted process, but it's worth the time. We're going to open up our wooden crate. There it is. Open up this guy inside of Blender. And again, the benefit of using Blender blend files in Unity is that we can quickly just double click them and they'll open up. We don't have to import an FBX and then export an FBX. We can just save the blend file. Then I can take this and go to my mannequin. Looks like I can't paste it for some reason. Why? Internal clipboard is empty. No, it's not. I just copied you. That's so weird. Okay, whatever. Um, one sec here. This is kind of annoying, but we're going to have to do this. Um, we're going to go to a wooden coat rack here. Just paste that in there and go back to Blender. Okay, file, import, uh, uh, import a blend file. Can we import a blend file? That's so annoying. Okay, one, one more thing here, guys. Um, whew, that's so annoying. Copy that. Internal clipboard is empty. How do I take you? Golly. That's really annoying because it worked the last time. Not sure what, it, what was going on. Okay, whatever. We're going to import an FBX of the... Uh, Okay, so she seems a little tall. The player is about two times the size of a box. Okay, so if we stacked two boxes um, like this, that's about the size she should be. Okay, so that's good enough for me. Let's try it and see if it works. I don't know why she's on her tiptoes. I guess that's the way a mannequin is. They're just sort of on their tiptoes. Um, file, save as. And so, oh, by the way, uh, her, everything about her um, needs to be applied. Apply all transforms. Um, actually, let's set the origin, object set origin to the 3D cursor, and then apply. This should do it. Isn't that weird, guys? Look at that. That's so strange. Object set origin to geometry. Look at that. Okay, I think I got it, I think I got it. So we need to go back in time. No, 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 we don't need to go back in time. What we need to do is just the rig itself, I believe we need to apply all transforms. Nope, that's not it. Hmm. What is it? Nope, that's not it. I really want this to be 111 scale right now is set to 0.007 which is ridiculous apply all transforms we gotta figure this out why is it doing what is that what is that crap boy i really hope these materials aren't separate Apply transforms as delta. Let's try it out. Come on, let me go back in time. Okay, good. Uh, apply all transforms as delta. Oh, yay, very good, yay. Okay, rotation X, what is it? 90, apply rotation as delta. Or do we even need to? Uh, apply rotation, no. <laughs> No, that's not what we want to do. Um, apply, <laughs> apply rotation uh, to deltas. Yep, and then we go rotation X 90. Ah, wait. I could be wrong here. I, keep, I always forget it. Um, but that's fine. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and save this into our uh, new props uh, folder here. We're going to go to type in mannequins. 
And just so you guys, uh, hopefully you're seeing that just because you're using assets doesn't mean it's just drag and drop, right? It needs to, you need to be very precise and you need, you need to have a system in mind of exactly the size and scale and rotation and, and the way you're using textures and what kind of materials, or what materials have, do they have normal maps? Are you using normal maps? What are your shaders? Uh, what are your roughness maps? Um, so this is gonna be mannequin, okay, dot blend. We're gonna save her and Honestly, I'm gonna to go to pose mode here because I know for a fact I'm never gonna use this pose. So we're just gonna do like a, a generic standard pose for our mannequins. Ooh, this is pretty, I like this song. Sorry, I need to think. I'm just thinking here, guys. How cool would it be if we, if we had mannequin enemies? See, that's called feature creep. Careful. Careful, Thomas. Okay, we're going to do that for now. Okay? We can always adjust the rig or the the, uh, the way it looks in, in uh, after we've imported it into Unity. Okay, so let's just make sure that this is even dragging properly into unity all right so far so good so there's no textures right now she's just gonna be hanging out over here all right guys one uh, additional ad read here just remember full-time game dev is 50% off right now by the way if you're a student let us know in the chat what you think about the program 50% off for the next six days for Black Friday biggest sale We've had all year. Ah, I think the size is good, actually. I like it. Good. Okay, now, the thing is, if you're curious about, well, it doesn't look like it matches the game. Number one, it's because of texture work, color, and then also shaders. We're gonna be unifying all the shaders to be Toonie Colors Pro shaders in just a moment probably in the next month. Okay, so that looks great. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and open up the, oh, let's go ahead and get the materials proper actually. Um, I hope and pray to the Lord on high that this thing is not separately textured. I hope everything is just one texture. That would be wonderful, please God. Can you make it happen as a miracle? Even if it isn't Lord, can you change it now? Thank you. Good, okay, he changed it for me. Thank you, Lord. All right, so if we take a look at uh, the albedo and the normal map and also the metallic smoothness, what do we wanna do? We wanna make them PSDs. So we're gonna start with the albedo. And I'm gonna assume that the dirty, that sounds weird, but the dirty mannequin is what we want. So we're just gonna do a nice clean mannequin, albedo, that's it. PSD, save it as a nice PSD. Let's actually create a new folder called PSD. Guys, remember these folders are not being saved inside of Unity. Um, they're being saved in my downloads folder because I'm gonna trash them eventually. Um, my downloads folder is like my scratch folder. When I'm finished with something, then I move it into Unity, all right? And this'll, give, this'll save you a lot of headaches um, in the long run. Okay, let's go to our models. Ordinary mannequins, we've got materials, 
damaged. We've got that PSD folder. What are we going to do? We're going to go to our metallic smoothness. Remember, we can store our metallic smoothness inside. We can store it inside of our alpha channel. I'm going to assume that's not white. No, that is actually. Um, maybe. We're going to store this inside of the, the, the alpha channel here. So I'm just going to paste it in alpha 1. That's a PSD. Good. Actually, that's named incorrectly. We're going to need to clean that up. Um, and we'll do that in just a minute. You can see here it has an extra space. Delete that. Okay. Um, and then also, hey, don't forget normal maps. Very, very important. Even if you're using a tune shader, guys, normal maps will make a huge difference for your game. And I used to be opposed to normal maps because the, if I'm using a tune shader, a lot of games that use tune shaders, they don't have normal maps. But in this case, for this game, our game looks really good with tune shaders, but also um, smoothness maps and also normal maps. Okay, let's go ahead and just name it Mannequin Normal. And hopefully you guys are learning how to do an asset flip. There is a there is a right way to flip assets, and there is definitely a wrong way. The wrong way is being rushy, rushy, and feeling like you have to use every single asset that you've downloaded and putting it all in your in your project folder. And believe me, we have that currently, and we need to do a big project cleanup. Um, okay, so we've got these two. That's all we need. So we're gonna go to our mannequins here, and there we go. See how clean this is, guys? Look, just drag that in all my life. Sorry, I'm quoting Star Wars. Okay, so I believe that that's all we need to do. And because this is all one material, has anybody used the material editor in Unreal um, with all the nodes? It's definitely cool, and I'm sure it's useful. And if I understood it, it'd probably be amazing. But it it's uh, it was hard for me to learn. I, I don't quite fully understand it, honestly. Okay, so for some reason, I don't like this base map at all. What? Hmm. That's not right. Son of a... You're not unwrapped properly, dude. Why are you not unwrapped properly? Oh, that's frustrating. Let's double check here what's going on. Models, female. Ah, uh, I picked the wrong ones, my friends. But that's okay, not gonna take long. Let's go ahead and just jump on over to the albedo. Copy, look how quick. Uh, Where are you? Mannequin. Oh, yeah, we need to grab the right one here. So let's go ahead and open up this one. Bing! Save that out. And <clears throat> delete that. We also need to go ahead and, yep. Oh, thank God. And then we can go to our normal. Sure, yeah, let's grab our normal map. Look how much difference this is gonna make, guys. This is gonna be so great. I can't wait to show you how this is gonna work. Um, good. And I like the idea of it just being a female mannequin. Um, there's a lot of uh, relational conflict in this game related to your girlfriend. And so there's a lot of um, references to her in the game. And I think we can use these mannequins to bring that out in the story. And she could sort of be a reflection of her. So that'll be cool. <clears throat> so let's grab the normal map here as well. Fix it. Okay, so that's... That's not the right one. I wonder what's going on here. Let us double check, my friends. Ah, I didn't copy it over for some reason. Not sure what happened there. Okay, save it. Look how beautiful this is gonna look. Good. Thomas, why didn't you just keep the models inside of Unity? Because I want them to be blend files and I want them to be PSDs. It's really important to me that things are blend files and PSDs. Who knows why I use blend files and PSDs? Does anybody know why I'm using blend files and PSDs and not FBXs and PNGs? Does anybody know? 
and let's go ahead and add in the proper um, roughness map. While you guys answer that question, let's go ahead and jump into our roughness map as well. Does anybody know the answer? Stick guy says it's a bad decision. That's why. Nope, that's not the answer. It's a simple way to make changes. Oh yes, Anders Edge, did I just save you a huge, huge headache? We use blend files for pretty much everything. Okay, there's our metallic smoothness. Yes, good. Um, so we're gonna grab this and we're just gonna use white here and copy that and then go to our actual albedo. Go to the channel here kill it and then paste it. Now watch, if I take this, then I can go to metallic uh, or uh, albedo alpha. And now you can see there's only certain aspects. Look at that guys. There's only certain aspects that are shiny. Looks great. Okay. So I, my, I'm going to take a gander and say that this is going to make the game look uh, just a 5% creepier just by having these mannequins standing there. Looks great. Okay, and just to be sure, let's double check and make sure that I don't have a massive uh, uh, amount of polys here. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a, dare I say, a refractaling. All right, Maybe we could use decimate. Um, yeah, it's a little much, isn't it guys? So we're gonna do remesh and we're gonna do sharp. I don't wanna be able to see this though. It's not showing up for some reason. Hmm. Oh, there we go. And then we'll do shade smooth. That's weird. Why is it doing that, guys? Why can I see it like that? I don't get it. Let's save it and see what it looks like. And here we go, guys. This is why we're doing this. I just have to save it and it'll show up in Unity. Yeah, why does it look like that? I like the I, I like to use remesh. Maybe remesh isn't the right one. Smooth shading. There we go. I don't know why I would do that, but pff, okay. So five is good. We could probably get away. With, maybe get away with six. Especially if I hit apply here. Let's take a look at edit and see. No. So I really want it to be pretty low. Give it a crunchy sort of low poly feel. Cool thing is you don't have to re uh, redo the uh, UVs, I don't believe. Let's take a look. Yeah. Are we okay with the UV? I think we are. Am I biting my tongue here? Let's take a look. Uh, it looks like it screwed up the UV, guys. Man, that sucks. Okay, D-Ho. What are you saying? D-Ho said something. Uh, decimate. Unsubdivide. Yay, that's a great one. Unsubdivide is a really good one, actually. Thank you, thank you. So let's double check here and see. Face count is now at 1690, six, uh, 1961. That's pretty good, actually, iterations. That is weird. But let's save it and see if this actually helps us out. Oh, good. Oh, good, okay. It's good enough, right? Um, there's a lot of things to do today, and also mannequins aren't my priority for this game. That looks weird, so we're gonna solve that. 
collapse, that might help as well. Let's try collapse. That looks much better, actually. Let's try collapse. Collapse looks a lot better. And notice how, guys, we're not being destructive here. Um, and what I mean by that is um, we aren't applying any of these modifiers. So if for some reason we want to change our method here, no skin off my nose, right? So we're going to do 0.5 for everything. So there's, it's nice and consistent. The fingers look kind of weird, don't they? Don't care. 0.5, and then the face, this one, this one's gonna be tough, but we're gonna do a decimation. We're gonna do 0.5 and just see what happens. Yeah, we might be okay, actually. Look at that. I like that, okay. Almost done with the mannequin, and then we can also add in the stand as well. I wanna make sure that there is a good, okay, so there's a cut there. So if we were to remove these legs, um, and put a stand there, we'll be okay. All right, so let's add in that modifier for decimate. 0.5. Good. Hey, save it out. Let's take a look. Those fingers are messed up, man. I wonder if, if we were to remove that, what would happen? They're still messed up. Look. Look at that. Why are they like that? Hmm. I almost don't want fingers. That's so weird. I don't want, I don't even want a rig for the fingers. That actually looks better because there's more of a bevel now. Look at that. Those fingers look messed up. Probably need to fix that. But hey, guys, overall, this is kind of what we're looking for. All right, I like it. Now, remember we had that cool, little, well, let's, let's see if we can fix those fingers. Let's figure this out here. If I were to go to our pose uh, and go to clear all, I don't get it. Those are probably, yeah. Sadly, I think that's what we're gonna have to do here just to make it not look weird. I don't know why they're doing that. I probably, this is probably my fault, but. Oh yeah, okay, I, I see, there's an IK. All right, so we're good. That looks great. Good, guys. Okay. Hey, fingers fixed. And that's why we use blend models, right? Why also do we use, uh, um, for example, why are we gonna use PSDs? Let me show you. I'm just gonna show you here an example, blood, texture, Splatter, PNG. Um, let's just take this as an example here. I'll show you in just a sec, guys. Hang tight, hang tight. Uh, save. Okay, let's go to our downloads here. We're gonna open up this. I don't believe that'll open in Photoshop. But we can try it out, okay? Let me show you why we're using I guess it works. Why does that, that is so weird. Oh, there we go. This is why we're using PSDs. If we just wanna do this really quick and add some blood splatter, it'll look pretty good inside of Unity. Okay. But we're not gonna add blood splatter for now. Just wanted to show you guys that's how you can do it. Okay, so let's close out all of our PSDs. Um, the mannequin, we're gonna keep the mannequin body open. We're gonna close out the crate and we're gonna go ahead and import file, import the FBX of, I believe it was an FBX of the coat rack. Good. So look at this guys. We have a coat rack here. That's a box, not a coat rack. What in the world? 
Okay, so it's not an FBX. Let's double check. All right, here we go. It's an OBJ. So let's go ahead and import our OBJ for our coat rack. So this is gonna be a great example of combining um, various elements. Before, listen, before we do anything by cutting the coat rack, we're actually gonna save out the coat rack so that we have it to use because I think it's on my list. So um, we're gonna go to downloads here, go to our source, and oh, let me import the freaking OBJ. Is it an OBJ? It says it is, but I don't see it. Oh, it's because it's, that's annoying. Um, it is a zip folder. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Wooden coat rack, golly. There we go. Okay, so now that we know the size of our mannequins, and those were determined by the size of the boxes. Boxes are the determining factor of the size of everything in the game. A box is half the size of a human in our game, okay? So now we can just say, well, a coat rack needs to be about the size of a human, something like that. I think that's pretty good. We're gonna apply all transforms like this. The rotation, is gonna be positive 90. Apply all. And then rotation back to negative 90. No, 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 Thomas, wrong. Shift, go to negative 20. That's wrong. Apply all transforms. I always get this wrong. Negative 90. Rotation, negative 90. Apply all transforms. Rotation positive 90. It's just a stupid unity thing. It's, it's hard to explain. Um, okay, so there's our coat rack. And we also have our armature with our mannequin. Uh, what are we going to do? We're going to... Hmm. I'm going to save this really quick. And we're gonna open up Unity here and make sure it's the right size. If it's the right size, then we can say, oh, that's great. We're gonna use this um, for other, for the actual, uh, for coat racks throughout the game. So let's double check and make sure it's the right size. I have a theory that it's not gonna look right. Yeah, it's because of Z up. Okay, so let's take a vote. Bigger, perfect, or smaller? Let's take a vote, go. Bigger, perfect, or smaller? Let me know in the chat. Okay, I agree. Little bit bigger, guys. Apply, not all transforms, don't screw up the rotation, just the scale. Yay! Save it, and now you can see it'll automatically update. Looks like it needs to be a little bit bigger. That looks like a coat rack to me, man. Okay, so I like the coat rack. We're good to go with the coat rack. Let's double check and make sure the mesh looks that's a little much. It really is, isn't it? Can we do, can we potentially decimate this? Probably not. I just feel like it's 7455. Can we cut it in half? I feel like we can. Let's save it and take a look. We didn't need that many. It looks fine. That's a pretty amazing algorithm. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. 
Yes, so good. Um, I'm cool with it. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually going to delete this armature. Whoa. Sorry about that. I'm gonna delete all this stuff here. Although I'm not apologizing actually. I think you guys are probably enjoying this. Let's delete this here. So we got a nice coat rack here. And what we're gonna do is actually save this really quick as a coat rack, because it's ready to roll. All right, should I use unsubdivide? Let's take a look. Ooh, unsubdivide is much better. Well, no, it's not. No, we're not gonna use unsubdivide, we're good. Okay, save it. Uh, coat rack good. Now we're gonna go back in time. And we wanna make sure that we go in, this is gonna be weird, but we're gonna save back over our mannequin. There we go. And the theory is everything should be totally fine. Yeah, good, okay. All right, so what's the next step? <clears throat> well, we're just going to simply cut this right where her, let's see here, right there. And we're gonna just move it up so that it's like this. It's a little thick. Isn't it? I'm trying to think of how a mannequin's supposed to look, y'all. Mm, Thomas, use your brain. Mannequin, creepy mannequin bust. We're not gonna make a mistake here and just rush this. We're gonna be smart about this. Okay, the bust usually doesn't have arms. That's one thing. So it's like this right here. I guess sometimes it does. It just needs to be thinner, okay? The, uh, that needs to be thinner down there. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna scale along the X axis by 0.50, scale along the Z axis, nope, by the Y axis by 0.5. Scale, scale, y, 0.5. That to me feels like it's gonna be better. I don't wanna be in isometric mode. How do I get out of this mode? Okay. I guess technically I could do y as well, or the z. And just do that. Man, let's think here. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm trying to think. <sighs> hmm. Because the waist is not low enough. I, it could also be that this is bugging me right here. That could be it as well. You know, that might be it. But let's go back in time. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this and then squash this. That might be the solution. There's only so much we can do here though. Okay, next, in, next thing to do, guys, is um, select any, everything above and kill it. I like this, delete. And then I'm just gonna fill in these. How do, I, how do I fill again? F, there we go. I haven't done Blender in a long time. 
by the way, those of you who are curious, the 3D art portion that the free course included in the full-time game dev bundle for today's sponsor, that's taught by Felipe, who's the 3D artist for um, the game. So, pretty cool. Did I delete the legs? Oh, son of a bee. I shouldn't have deleted them. Thomas, don't be don't be the way you are. You need to be careful, buddy. Okay. That doesn't look weird. Okay. Gosh, let me just I just want to disable that. It's giving me nightmares. Okay, so let's save this here. Um, we've got a coat rack ready to roll. Uh, so what we can do, this is going to be interesting. If we go to Unity, and by the way, yep, we're good actually. Yeah, there it is. Um, so we're going to go ahead and revert all of our changes. Good. Um, that's not, let's actually just revert the transform of this guy here. There we go. All right, so we've got the, the wooden coat rack that can go below. It probably does need to be... The origin's all off too anyway, so let's go ahead and set the origin to the 3D cursor and actually scale it. Okay, I think I get it. It's just not gonna look right. I think it needs to be this. Okay, let's go ahead and set the 3D cursor to right here. Has anybody figured out the snapping to vertices yet? How do I snap the, the, the uh, cursor? Oh, cursor to grid? No, I wanna do cursor to selection. I think maybe, no, I'm trying to get it to snap to those vertices. Hmm. Anyway, all right, let's go ahead and set the origin here. Um, apply origin or set origin. Oh, Thomas. Press GB. G B. Uh, I think I get it. I think I might get it. G, B. No, I don't know what that does. Sorry, I don't get it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and set the origin here. Set origin to 3D cursor. And then we're just going to bring it down to... Uh, there we go. Okay, so that's, that's fine, I guess. Um, we're going to save that. And then we're gonna open up Unity here. It's not G then, it is not G then B, it's B then G. What, what do you mean? G, hold G and then press B? Oh, that might do it, okay, we'll try that. So if I have my cursor here, and I wanna set my origin to the vertice here, I hold G then press B. No, I gotta got to grab my cursor, where's my cursor? I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. Hold G. Man, I don't know. Cursor to selected in edit mode. Oh, cursor to selected, then edit, then origin to cursor. Okay, quick, okay, okay. hang on, hang on. That's it. That's what we want to do. So go to edit mode. We grab a. Stop it. I think I got it. Edit mode, grab a vertice. Okay, we can actually just grab that one. Is that is that one of them? No. Grab one in here, one here. And then we can go to cursor to select it in edit mode. How? So 
Sorry, guys. This is one thing I've never been able to figure out. Shift S. Mm. Nope. Right click. Okay, Anders Edge, what is it? Shift S, cursor to selected. Ah, yes. Shift, cursor, there we go, okay. Yay, we did it! <laughs> Thank you. All right, and then, and then I go to my object mode and I say object, set origin uh, to 3D cursor. Good, okay, now, now what I wanna do is set its location to 000. zero, zero. That's the theory. There we go. Nice and flat. <gasps> Gracias. All right. So <laughs> save that out. And we're going to go ahead and revert the position of the actual coat rack here. Good. All right. So what does this mean, guys? Well, it means that we can actually move this. We can move it back inside of blend file. Actually, we're totally fine. Just simply moving this. Oh crap! We need to make sure that that origin is so Thomas. Uh, you know, I'm actually okay. How do I just move the the origin? Um, so if we grab the origin, oh Thomas, what am I doing here? This the origin stuff is always a pain. I need that origin to. Is that going to do it? I know it's painful, isn't it, guys? Watching, watching me fail. What I want to do is go ahead and I want this origin to not, I just want to move it over along the Z. Okay, cursor, position, we want it, Z, is it the Z? No, it's the Y. Nope, I want to grab the cursor. There's a tick box to move origin with the gizmo. Where? Right here? Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Oh my word. That's a little weird, but we've got it. We've got it, y'all. So I should be at a zero, zero position along the Z. Hey, hey. Oh, okay. That feels great. Woohoo. All right. Now, what are we doing? Well, we want to make sure that that coat rack texture is usable, right? So we're actually gonna to go to the coat rack itself and we're gonna grab that texture. Um, here's our folder with the coat rack because we could just use the same material and just drag it onto the coat rack pedestal on the mannequin, okay? So same process here, guys. We're being very, very careful. We wanna make sure we go to our, our textures here and we're gonna to go to our base color, file, Save as, and we're just going to call this Coat Rack Albedo. It's going to be what? It's going to be a PSD. Save that there. 
Um, also, we want to go to the, the roughness. It's not really metallic, so I'm not even going to worry about the metallic, to be completely honest with you. Um, go to our channels here, throw that in there, and now we've got an alpha channel for our albedo that we can use. Okay. Then, hey, we're also going to go to our normal map, open that up, and we're just going to save this file, save as wooden coat rack, or just coat rack, normal. Nice, clean words. Clean words, right? Okay, we're going to go to Unity. Where are the textures, Thomas? Well, remember, everything's in my downloads folder. It's where I like to have all my working copies of everything. Go to our PSD, copy those into the coat rack. Beautiful, right? So really quick, before we even forget, we're gonna to go to our coat, we're gonna make sure the coat rack is all set up, okay? So there's our coat rack. That's a small coat rack, but I think, I think it's what we need. I think we needed it to be small. If it looks really weird next to the coat rack, we might wanna change it. Um, but for now, what we're gonna do is get this coat rack working perfectly. So we're just gonna drag in the albedo. It's gonna create a materials folder, which is great. There it is, good. Drag in our normal map as well, set the metallic or the Albedo Alpha, there we go, everything's all set. And now we've got a sort of shiny, uh, <laughs> coat rack. Okay, so why do we have PSDs? Again, so that we can change the colors really quickly here, okay? It's too red and too saturated, so we're gonna decrease the saturation the darkness as well, so it's kind of gray. And now we can just save it. And look, it's gonna update and it's gonna look like it matches in the game. That's the theory. What in the world? Let's make sure we close all these. Good, okay. Drop the hue saturation down, darkness down, save it. And now it should update on the fly. It's a little too dark. And notice how I'm in unlit mode, guys. Um, sorry, I'm looking at my door because Jeb is, he's like right outside my door. Um, he wants to see me. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. And then you can also look in lit mode as well and just see how things look. Okay, let's go ahead and add a box collider, or actually just a pushable object. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these values we really need a nav mesh obstacle on there as well. If it's going to be pushable, we want a nav mesh obstacle. So we're going to paste that as new. Um, and then also the pushable object itself. We're going to paste that on there as well. Paste the component values. Uh, here's our box collider. Do we really want a box collider, guys? Yeah. Keep it simple. Okay, so we've got a coat rack. Why don't we just go ahead and throw that into our prefabs folder. Don't freeze on me, Unity. Please don't freeze on me. Thank you, Lord. Create a variant, save it. This fella, in theory, should drag, there we go, right into the scene, so we can put as many coat racks as we want. Hey, check it out. Very good. Let's grab our ax here and see if it works. That was a weird rotation that occurred but I actually think we're okay. They're a bit shiny, so we're gonna reduce the shine for our coat rack. Okay, and then we're also gonna make sure it's set to the proper uh, tag. So we're gonna go into the prefab itself and we're gonna set the tag to what? Wood. All right, so the coat rack is all, watch out, Thomas. The coat rack is all set up. And remember with that material, guys, we can go ahead and just add it here as well. Um, so we're gonna go to, what is it called? Coat rack. We have our material here, ornate wooden coat rack. There we go. It's all ready to go. So we have our mannequin, right? Um, we're just gonna make a big um, pushable object on 
the entire, well, I'm gonna create two versions, okay? We're gonna have this version, which is just the standard mannequin without the coat rack. And it's gonna have a pushable object on there. Um, box collider, that's not set up properly. That's okay, so we can just do this. Good. Sure, we could do a mesh collider, but I don't really wanna deal with that because you'd have to put it on every single body part. So we'll just do something like this. And frankly, guys, no, we're not gonna do this. It's gonna have a box collider, but we're not gonna have a rigid body on here or a pushable object. And that's just because the ability to jump on these things is gonna be a problem because it'll kill a lot of the puzzles in the game. So we're not gonna worry about it, okay? Thomas, what mic do you use? Uh, this is a, a Shure SMB, a Shure SM7B. It's like the best mic I've had um, in, in terms of YouTube. I highly suggest it. Uh, but you're gonna need a Scarlet box, a Scarlet audio box, or some kind of audio unit box thingy. Um, okay, so we're gonna remove the rigid body as well and just have a box collider, okay? Just so the player can't knock it over. Um, so let's go ahead and basically, we're gonna go ahead and create a variant out of this. So this is gonna be called mannequin variant, right? But also we're gonna create one that is the mannequin um, without legs. And we gotta make sure we've set up the, uh... <sighs> we need to clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we have our mannequin, but th the problem is, is I feel like the, it just needs to be a little bit taller. And I think that needs to be, yeah, so let's do this. Just scale her up a little bit more, save it. Take a look here. And we also need to see what it looks like with them beside, beside each other. So we have this version, this is gonna be mannequin bust only. Is that how you spell that? Is that even a word? I don't care. And then we're gonna take the arms off. See, definitely too shiny. There we go. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, well, actually, we haven't, careful, Thomas, we need to drag this, and this is a variant of the variant. Okay, so we're gonna drag the regular mannequin in there. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Does a, does a mannequin, are they able to stand when they have legs? I'm trying to figure this out. Like, does that even make sense? You know? What do you look for when you hire people on your team? Uh, humility, um, willingness to listen, uh, a, a understanding of the artistic vision of my style of games. Because it's difficult for me to try and convince people to do stuff. If I say I want a bounce pad to look like a butt, make the bounce pad look like a butt. Um, and trust me, um, I like that. It doesn't mean that I don't wanna hear ideas. Believe me, we have tons, but those ideas are always within the, within the Thomas Brush uh, sort of abstract vision. But what we could do here is like disable certain things so that, that they, things don't get repetitive. So that's kinda cool. Cool, okay. Um, well, that looks great. Let's hit play here. They have a Sokol, a metal stick. Okay. So what we might wanna do here, 
Yeah, what we might want to do here, guys, is make that middle piece really thin. So it could be that it's just that piece. So let's go to edit mode here. And we're going to squash by to 25% and squash in the Y at 25%. Like that. That actually might look great. Let's take a look. Ah, yes, it's a little thin. So let's try again. Scale in the X by 0.35. Scale in the Y by 0.35. Save. Let's take a look. It, it really helps to just constantly hit play mode to give you an idea of, cause scale, scale is one of the number one reasons why your game doesn't look good. You want scale to be, and I've, I've suffered with this a lot, trying to get scale perfect. Uh, but I think that's a little too thin. We could probably get away with scaling up the entire thing um, and then just having the bust um, a little higher up, you know. Okay, here we go. That's kind of good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's fine. I think we could probably get away with it being the same height. It's like that. And then going to the, the bust itself um, and just Re removing the change here with the transform value. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Sorry, guys. One sec here. Let's just move it up manually. That's fine. I just feel like it needs to be a little lower. I don't know why. Just need. I don't know. It's just too high. Um, okay, so question then. Um, it always needs to have that stick going up through it. Is this true? Um, if that's the case, we need to go to pose mode here. And uh, we're almost done with this mannequin. I'm getting bored. Um, what is happening? There we go. Let's go to pose mode here, and we're going to make the feet not like clipping yeah we don't want it clipping the wood but yeah I don't know if mannequins are always always on this little pedestal thing Bus mannequins are always put on furniture. That's that's potentially true, yeah. But yeah, I do kind of feel like there needs to be a coat rack. Always sort of going up. <laughs> I don't know if I'm right here. I don't know. Um, I'm going to save this scene, though. Um, guys, guys, can y'all y'all debate this for me, okay? And get a consensus. What are we going to do here? Because um, I got to pee. Hang tight. <laughs>
All right, all right. Um, that feels great. Wow. Okay, does anybody have any thoughts here? If, if it's a full body, it's typically foot bolted into base. If it has support, it's into the back. Uh, not into the groin, is what you're saying? Um, yeah, that's this is what we're going to do. I'm fine with it being this way. Let's go ahead. It, there's just only so much we can worry about, guys. Um, what I'm going to do here is we're going to just make the pose a little bit better. And we're actually going to cut these vertices off and fill this, save it. And that's, that's about all we need to do here. But let's make it kind of like a cute pose. By cute, I mean something like this. So let's do that. So let's go to uh, the actual pose. There we go. Go to pose mode here. So she's like this. So she needs to be turned. Hi. Do I get some ice cream? And she's like, oh yeah, she's gonna have her heel. And the, the legs, yeah, the legs are together, yeah. Yeah, I usually I practice, I practice this in my alone time. Okay, there we go. Do you guys think I should uh, stream on Twitch? I'm trying to figure out what, what people usually do for Twitch. Nah. <laughs> No, Twitch bad. Why? I can do multi-streaming, geez. Oh, there we go, that's cute. Look how cute that is. But the head is usually turned like this. So it's actually the other way. All right, there's only so much we can do though. My biggest problem is I get caught working on stupid stuff, stuff that I really shouldn't be worried about. Look at that, there we go, look at that pose. Lot better. And what I'm gonna do with this armature here is just bring it down a little bit and watch, you're gonna hate me, but we're going to do a negative just like that so it's the opposite. And I say that because you really don't want to do negative values like that, but whatever. Okay, let's hit play and take a look. I don't know if there's a... Watch this, I wonder. No, 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 there's too much to do, Thomas. Don't don't get caught up doing stuff. Okay, so we're good. How do we feel about the mannequins, guys? Good? Oh, one sec. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just want to get this perfect here. There we go. I just feel like it should be lower like this. I really do, guys. I don't know why. I'm just gonna do it. We're gonna just Pray that that's what we, we need to do here. Um, okay, we're good. Look at this, guys. We've got mannequins and we've got fire extinguishers. Let's explore and see what the progress we've made. And then we're gonna go back to today's tasks and see what we need to work on, okay? All right. I'm fine with being able to throw these, but these I do not want to be able to throw. Great. And one of the cool things we can do with these mannequins is, let's see here. 
I need to send a message to my team. They're waiting for me for a meeting. You can like disable arms and stuff and heads. Isn't that cool? So overall, we got pretty sweet mannequins here. Um, let me let me text them really quick. Okay. Um, what's next? What's next? What's next? We've got cobwebs. Don't really want to do that. Um, I think we've got some of those anyway. Or we could do hanging ivy. You guys want to double check? Okay, so we've got sketch fab and then we've also got turbo squid. So let's jump on in, take a look here. I want to do a wall telephone, vintage wall telephone. Let's hope that there is one. There we go, 25 bucks. And I'm gonna guess that we can, that one actually works great. Mm. I'm really glad that they have this actually. Um, that's cool, it's on sale for 14 bucks. Let's take a look and see. Not bad. The wire, I, I, I kind of want to be able to delete it and then separate out the phone so that I could just grab the phone and throw it kind of like, uh, <laughs> kind of like um, Half-Life. But that's not really a wall phone, is it? Well, I guess it is, yeah. What do you guys think? Let's do it. I'm gonna buy this really quick, guys. It's only 14 bucks. Um, This really matches the game, actually. Sorry, it's taking a while to load. Oh, good, we got it. Look at that. It's got, it's just dirt. This whole like drinking dirt diet, I don't know if it's actually working for me. All right, let's go ahead and download this. Same thing, guys. Same process. Bring it into another object. Make sure the scale is relatively correct. And then add the proper textures, which are PSDs. Make sure it's a blend file. Add the rigid bodies and the pushables, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. <laughs> All right, so let's. Uh, apparently, the OBJ is the way to do this. Um, so we're going to call this phone. Open that. Save. And extract. Okay, we've got materials, we've got objects, but we don't have the textures. Why? Oh, I hate when that happens. Uh, save that in here as well. Okay guys, so what I wanna do is we're gonna use the, the mannequin as our relative size, okay? Um, and we're gonna go ahead and just import it. It's that simple. Downloads, phone, gotta import the OBJ, import. <sighs> I almost had a heart attack, I couldn't find it. Okay, go to downloads, uh, phone, Good, there we go. All right. Where's my phone? Okay, so we're gonna scale this down significantly and we're gonna basically make the phone the size of the mannequin's head. I think that seems reasonable, right? Um. I feel like it just needs to be a little bit bigger. Turn off snapping. And I think that's great. Okay, so file, save as. 
phone. I like things really so I, I like using generic words, no underscores, nice and clean. It's not 1990. All right, we're going to delete everything else here. We're going to delete the armature as well and this little pole. And also, I want to set my origin to How do I set my origin? Ugh. What's the, how do we do this? Set origin to, ah, oh, yes, we can move, yeah, that's right. We can move the origin, I forgot. Um, how do I do this? No. Object mode, how do I move the, my origin to the center again? I keep forgetting, guys, origins. How do I transform my origin values? I can't remember. Shift right click. No, but how do I make it snap? I want it to snap to the grid. That's annoying. Oh, look at this. You could have snapped a vertice here, guys. Oh, man. Well, I thought I could do that. What, what's going on? Oh, geez. I don't know what to do. Shift C. Okay. Shift C. Oh, I guess that did it. I don't know why that did it, but I'll take it. What, how do I, how do I remember that? <laughs> um, and then we're going to go ahead and take this, uh, we're going to take the object here. I just want to make sure we turn that off. Yep. And then we're going to set the origin. As long as it's properly lined up, we're actually going to set the origin of the telephone to the 3D cursor um, just because we want it to be always at the same position. Um, what do we think? Is that a bad idea? It's probably a bad idea. Hmm. Let's bring it down just like that. Origin, okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to remember how to do this. I grab this, um, and then I shift S, and then I say cursor to selected. Yay, I figured it out. Or, well, you guys did, but I remembered it. Um, set origin to 3D cursor, then I can drag it down and put it at a zero position. There we go, guys, look at that. Now it's nice and clean. I like it, I'm happy with it. Apply all transforms and then remember the rotation the rotation x negative 90 apply all transforms rotation x positive 90 yay so it's gonna be a nice zero rotation inside of unity now here's the thing guys eh, I don't mind the vertices I think they're it's a little much there, but definitely the wire is causing me problems. So the wire here, I'm actually going to remove it. Delete those vertices. That, curious what that, if I need that. No, I don't need that. What's the, uh, how do I select? Is it plus, control plus? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Look how fun that is. I'm having a blast. This is great. By the way, guys, if you haven't downloaded or <laughs> by the way, if you haven't checked out full time game dev, be sure to check it out below. It supports the channel. It also supports you guys. I know 4000 of you have enrolled in the program. Check it out below. It's 50% off. You're going to learn everything that I've learned about building a sustainable game studio, not only making games, the production side, but also running a studio and getting funding from a publisher, six figures. You can actually do six figures or more. I've done it multiple times from either Kickstarter or publishers with just a demo. So be sure to check it out below, okay? All right, so that's our phone. There's gonna be no wire, who cares? Um, and it's all set up there. Okay, so we're gonna grab the phone and we're gonna separate the phone out, okay? Shift plus, nope, that's not it. 
I just did it. Control plus. There we go. Um, let's see here. Thomas, how long do you usually develop standing up? Well, uh, I've actually been going to the doctor because I can't figure out why my abdomen hurts. And it really hurts when I sit down. But I got test results back yesterday and it, they all said that everything was fine. So I'm thinking maybe it's a strained muscle from deadlifts. Yeah, that's right, I work out. Um, so. Okay, so we can just do this for just the items that are close to the, everything else we can just select here. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna separate this out, this entire mesh, we're gonna separate out. Does it make sense, guys, what I'm doing? Hopefully it makes sense. Oh no, that's not good. We want to subtract that and this as well. Pretty cool, huh? All right, guys, the telephone is going to be its own rigid body that we can grab. Okay. Apply the decimator. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe your abdomen hurts from all the dirt. What? I didn't think about that. So you guys don't think I should drink soil? Mesh, separate, selection. <gasps> Yay! So he's or his, his origin will be at the center of the mass. And then the, this little fella, I have a theory, <clears throat> which is I want to be able to rotate this thing by pressing E. But no. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> okay, let's rename this. Um, this is going to be the phone. <laughs> Uh, wait, what do you call this? The headset? Headset. Or handset. Handset. And then the wall, the, the phone for the wall. Or I guess we could call it the wall unit. Uh, not unity. Unit. All right. Um, hey, look at this, guys. I feel great. I think we could probably add a modifier here which is a decimate. And we're gonna give it a go um, with the collapse. It doesn't really need it, does it? It just makes it really bad. I think that this we could probably maybe do. Decimate and then do, we could try on subdivide. Nope, that ain't gonna happen. That doesn't look bad. Look guys, it got rid of all those lines, which is totally fine with me. It's not perfect. I'm gonna save it out. We're gonna call that a, uh, a telephone. Y'all ready? Let's jump inside of Unity. I'm thrilled. It's, it's just such an important thing to create objects like this for your game. So you can just scatter them throughout the game and make it feel lived in. Um, what's it called? Telephone. No, it's called phone. I kind of feel like we need to make this thing bigger. <laughs> what the heck? Um, why is it so small? It's tiny, this thing. It doesn't really make sense, guys. Even though the <laughs> the mannequin's head is that big, it just doesn't work. Um, so let's let's hit play and see how it feels. It feels tiny. Yeah, we're gonna make it bigger.
Nope. We're going to scale from the local origin. I want to scale from the pivot. How do I scale from the pivot? There we go. So I'm going to do a scale of 2. No, a scale of 1.5. save. Let's see how better it looks. <laughs> how much better it looks. Okay, that didn't work. So what you have to do is sometimes when you make scale uh, changes like that, you have to drag it back in. There we go. All right, we're going to take a look here, guys. Ready? Why would a landline phone be in ch inside of a chamber full of mannequins? Because this is a theme park. And that's what this whole milestone is all about. Okay, so we need to be able to grab that. Okay, looks good. I like it. Let's go ahead and go to our, um, make sure the phone is properly sitting there. Drop that down a little. Okay, save it. I'm gonna close all this. I'm getting kind of overwhelmed. And let's um, drink some soil. and go to our textures. Y'all ready? Let's do this. What am I doing? Okay, phone. I'm having a blast, but I am getting a little tired, but that's okay. Okay, let's go to our textures, extract our textures. Good. And look at this. We've got everything we need. We go to our diffuse here, file, Save as, PSD, same process guys. Hopefully you guys are learning um, why I do this and kind of the, how the process works. It's very important. It will save you a lot of sanity. Um, I, don't, I guess I do need a metallic. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to, we're gonna save out the metallic, yeah. yeah. This is the metallic, PSD. Um, Save out the metallic for the PSD. We're also going to include, watch it. What? We're also going to go to our roughness map and we're going to include this roughness map inside of the phone's alpha channel because we can use the alpha channel as an interpreter. Essentially, it's just as data that Unity can use to say, okay, what? how much roughness is going to be applied to this phone in what locations? And that's what the roughness map is for. Um, on that channel, on the alpha channel. Good, okay, what about the normal map, Thomas? Well, let's go ahead and open that up. What? Surely you have a normal map. Are you kidding me? Surely you have a normal map. Nope. There's not a normal map there. What the, he sorry. What the heck? I guess we could use this and create one. Let's try it out. How is there no normal map? That's weird. Click, uh, yeah, that'll probably do it. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, uh, but Fine, I guess. Let's try it. Um, that didn't work. Oh, jeez. Why would you not include a normal map? It's so frustrating. Um, unless I'm missing something. Uh, click OK. That's so weird. What, what mode are we in? Ah, it's, we're in grayscale, that's why. Um, so let's swap back out, go to mode, RGB. The thing about uh, normal map generation is it can look really dumb if you're not careful. 
um, with with Photoshop. So we're only going to include normal maps for certain things because you can see it's like pressed in there for some reason, which is really weird. Um, I mean, this is you can you could definitely get away with this. So let's go ahead and save this as a PSD, and we'll we'll tweak it. Um, it'll it'll definitely serve us fine. Okay. All right. So let's go to our PSDs. I'm actually going to call this phone normal map. I'm going to call this phone albedo, and this is phone metallic. And we are almost there, guys. Okay. Dante De Kelly says it's gonna look worse. Well, we shall see. Maybe, maybe you're right. You might be, and it's no skin off my nose if you are. What is that? We don't need that. Metadata, huh? That's weird. Blend one file. I don't like blend one files. I don't know why they appear in Unity, but it's okay. All right, guys, we've got our textures. Let's drag it on there. Um, where's my phone? Handset? Good. Oh, we don't even need to do any unwrapping. It's all good to go. Look at that, fellas. Okay, so that's what it looks like without a normal map. And so what we're gonna do um, is, let's throw in the metallic as well. Better, better. And also, albedo alpha is the the map for the shine. So the reason why I want a normal map is because I need it for this, okay? Stuff like that, because we decimated it, we need that normal map. Um, <sighs> occlusion map, does anybody know if occlusion maps actually do anything? <laughs> I always struggle with occlusion maps. Um, like for example, this, uh, mixed AO. I don't know. They fake detail shadows. Yeah. I've never seen it work in Unity, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, let's throw on that normal map. Y'all ready? Here we go. Let's take a look. Fix. Yay, it looks a lot better. So this is without. This is with. Without. With. It actually helps a lot. Um, and I actually can't see anything that's really bugging me. That metallic map, I think what we need to do is we need to make sure that roughness map has a lot more contrast. Sorry if you can hear Jebby barking, guys. He's screaming. He's so mad. He's just gonna go crazy. All right, y'all ready? Let's open up that albedo and let's go ahead and change the contrast of this alpha. So we're gonna do some crazy contrast. What is this, guys? This is the roughness map, meaning the white is super shiny and the brown, or the, I'm sorry, the, the black and the grays are not, okay? Oh, this music is giving me like crazy emotion. Oh. Ooh, check out that shine. Look at that. Looks like, uh, it looks like it's sweating. All right, much better. For some reason though, there's no shine on the metallic and it's bugging me. Um, is the metallic inverted? I mean, we probably just need more contrast here. Why are you doing that? Like, it's fine. I mean, there's only so much I can do here, but we do need to match the uh, the colors. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the albedo, and you guys are gonna love this. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna want to match. Remember, 
It's so important for you to know your color palette. In fact, I would argue you should have a document with your flat colors that you're using in your game. Or if you have five levels, right? Here are my colors for this level. Here's my colors for this level. Here's my colors for this level. And wait for it, here's my foundational colors, my global colors. In my case, we have a orange that we use constantly, okay? So our golds are pretty vibrant like this. Our browns, which are more of the reds, we desaturate and increase the vibrancy of the brightness a little bit. See? That's why we're using PSDs. So now I just got chills. It matches our game. Okay, hey, let's go ahead and add this rigid body or pushable object script here with a box collider. Good. There's a box collider on the wall unit as well. That's fine. Uh, but it's not going to be pick upable. You won't be able to pick it up. Um, the wall unit is going to be made out of wood, although let's be, let's be honest, we could create a new material called telephone. And when you punch it or you hit it, it goes ching -ching, and it plays that phone sound. Um, man, I should do that, shouldn't I? Handset here, uh, we're going to just go ahead and take the pushable object component values and paste it on this fella, paste values. And wait for it. Ah, yes. Set it to is kinematic. Guys, that was so cool. That was the fastest thing ever. I might be an asset flipper master. You can't pick him up. Man, I feel like it needs to be bigger. Isn't that weird? I just feel like it needs to be bigger. Uh, I'm not sure why. It's up at 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 1 1. Huh. I might just do it in Unity. We got a lot to do, guys. Isn't that weird how it feels like it's just too small? Why is it so high? Uh, that's a good question. I couldn't pick up the handset for some reason. Um, I think it's because the wall unit. Ah, uh, yes. Guys, I try and avoid mesh colliders as much as possible. So I tend to tend to avoid them. Okay, the handset should be mm, grabbable now. Um, dang it. We might need to use a mesh collider for this guy. Doesn't make me happy, but I can't pick it up. I can't pick up the phone for some reason. Classic. That's really high, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, hey. He's all set, dude. One more time, let's hit play, just to make sure. By the way, the branding on this uh, fire extinguisher is all wrong. We're in the 1920s, I need to fix that. This is, is wrong. It's great. Get out of here. Okay. That's great. Let's see if this fix, uh, well, let's make a prefab out of it. Um, we're gonna make sure that this is called wall phone. No, don't do that, Thomas. We, we'll just need to trust that, that uh, everyone knows what they're doing. So let's drag this in here. Oh my goodness, I love it. Okay, so we've got a cool phone here that works great. Let's fix this branding. Again, guys, this is why, this is why we uh, make everything Photoshop, okay? This branding looks terrible, uh, or just, I guess, the topography. 
it needs to look like the 1920s. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do some silly text, all right? Um, I, you guys know, you probably know this, I love Noun Project because it solves a lot of problems for us. Look, watch this. If I go to Noun Project, I could type in Flourish, and you're going to get all kinds of cool, like, 1920s flourishes. Um, and we don't want to waste our time, guys. You know, we've got a lot of things to do. So you, you'll notice this if, if you play Bioshock, especially if you revisit it. The graphic design isn't great. Um, some of the stuff is really kind of cheap looking. And I think it's because there's a lot to do um, in world building. And so with small stuff like this, you just got to get moving. Um, so we're going to do fire. Let's see if we can find a cool fire. Yeah, this works for me. So now it has a more 1920s vibe. We could even do like this and cut it here. See the guys? Kind of cool. And then the flourish, we could even blend into the white. We've got a lot to do. And so worrying about all this is not it's not on my list of priorities. Uh, you're going to learn as you make games what you should be focusing on and what you shouldn't. Why am I focusing on this? Well, because there are three parts of a Trinity Hook. A Trinity Hook is what makes your game marketable, what makes it something that you can actually sell. In this case, we have three points being the story, the visuals, and the gameplay. If a change that you're working on, like I'm working on a change right now, if it does not solve or, or help drive home any aspects of the Trinity hook, you're wasting your time. You're just being cocky. And I'm being serious there. Oftentimes we're so cocky about our games that we think that we have to change everything to make people happy. In reality, all you're doing is making yourself happy. Um, what was that messaging? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have some kind of weird phrase. Don't burn to death. So the visual, the visual hook of our game is very important. It's 1920. It's Bioshock. It's got a very Bioshock feel. So it's important that the branding matches that. So that's why I don't feel like we're wasting our time here. Uh, what, what's this? Uh, Garamond. Uh, we're going to be using Garamond a lot in our game. Almost done, guys. Almost done. And this is why you want to always unwrap um, properly in Blender. So when you get a model, you want it to be nice and unwrapped properly, so that you can do edits like this in Photoshop, and it doesn't it doesn't require you to export an FBX and set it up inside of uh, substance. Okay, good. And all this crap right here, we're just gonna, we're gonna remove. And we're gonna come, we're gonna do some kind of a weird flourish or something. So let's type in, or Art Deco. Type in Art Deco. Yeah, you're right, Ivan. It's not a true 1920s fire extinguisher. But we can make it look like one as much as we can. You know, we're doing our best here. Uh, <clears throat> one of the ways we can make it look like a fire extinguisher from the 1920s is I believe we could... Uh, um, We could go in and make it more rounded. Oops. That's weird. I can't grab that color for some reason. Hmm. Color overlay. Okay, save that out and open up Unity here. And then finally, we can add some texture to it and make it. Uh, I wonder if we could add. You know what I think we could do? 
we could add some um, oh, man, rust to it. So let's go ahead and see if we've got some rust texture we can use. Oh, good, we do. Let's grab that. Quick, t quick 20s fix. Remove the hose and put a crank on top and then change it to a copper color. I think copper is definitely what we want to do here. But let's give some rust to this really quick. Do an overlay here. Save that. Okay, so far so good. We're getting there. And what we want to do is we want to just take this bit here, <clears throat> paste it, and then we can loop it. Look, watch. Merge these layers together, transform flip vertical, and then just set it to overlay. In fact, I actually want to do this. Take this here, and I'm going to just do this. We're trying to be quick here, guys. If we weren't trying to be quick, we need to get, um, we need to open it up in substance and do it right. But there's a lot to do in this game, and the fire extinguishers are the last thing on my list of things to worry about. Good. All right, let's hit play and see if it feels, it feels okay. If it feels okay, we're good. Yeah, it needs metallic, man. Okay. It needs to be metallic. Okie okay, dokie. So let's go to our metallic here. Look at that. There we go. Yay. Okay, we're getting there. Uh, do the metallic map. And then um, we don't need metallic on the hose. Uh, so what we need to do is create a metallic map. So therefore, what we do is this right here, this right here. I'm going to be quick here, guys. Actually, watch this. Let me just grab it right here. Um, There we go. All this crap here. We don't want it to be metallic. We're just being quick and quick and effective here, guys. So we want this to be ignored by the the the, um, the metallic map, okay, guys? But also, what we want to do with the metallic is create some a rust effect. And so what you do here is this would be insanely contrasted like this drop down the hue saturation we may even do a, a posterizing effect we could probably do that let's keep 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 adding contrast here guys there we go so then we can grab these little bits here, copy those, delete them, and those are going to be uh, black. I think this will work. I don't think I've ever really worked with a metallic map before. So this is going to be our metallic. Fire extinguisher, metallic. And this will also be the roughness map as well. So we could just literally just grab all this, copy it, and then go back to the albedo and go to our channels here. This is our, I have a theory that's what we want. Let's double check. Okay. Good, 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 good. And then all we can do with our metallic Finally, we just do this. This is why I love using PSDs. And 
then we go to our roughness map. Channels. Just creating some subtle roughness. That's good to me, man. Okay. That's fine by me. It's not perfect, but it's whatever. Um, what else we got in today's tasks? Hanging ivy cobwebs in a clawfoot tub, huh? We're looking for something very simple. I kind of feel like I want Felipe to do the tub because I want it to be his style. Hmm. Yeah, that's not something I feel like I should be doing. I feel like he'd do a much better job than if I were to flip some assets. Let's uh, type in some hanging moss. I feel like I feel like with Unity Asset Store we would get a much do a much better job with doing some hanging ivy here. So let's take a look at the asset store. Oh, I smell food. Kelsey's cooking. Hanging ivy. Ah, oh, look at this. You could probably just type in ivy. Ooh. This looks good. There's a lot of options, actually. Girlfriend, what are you making down there? That looks, oh man, it's, or it smells really good. Um, let's see here. This might work. It looks kind of cheap, but that kind of looks good at the same time. 20 bucks. Jeez and crow. Let's see here. I think there's there's probably better options. What do you guys think? I don't need procedurally generated ivy. I just need ivy. Can you give me a close up please? Yeah, that's better. Are you in Florida right now? No. I'm in uh, South Carolina. I'm just uh, in South Carolina. Um, yeah, I like it. Let's grab it. Grab some ivy here. Okay, guys. We've just we've spent like a hundred bucks today. That's not true, probably like 50. But that's okay, that's better than spending your own time. Uh, if you have the money, then do it, you know? Um, that's, that's my theory. This light makes it look like I have a big belly. I don't want that. I don't, I'm insecure about that. Okay, uh, let's open this up. You guys ready? I got a tinkle again. Uh, download the Ivy Pack. Kind of a noob here. Can I use Unity Store stuff in Godot? I actually don't know that, that question. In terms of like functionality, sure. Um, as long as it doesn't have code, but in terms of 
the license? I'm actually not sure. Now for this Ivy pack, guys, I may very well, because there's just so many prefabs, I don't think I'm gonna go in and make blend files out of all this stuff. And it's just, it's almost like a decal. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Not really. But we do need to update these materials. So these, uh-oh, you did not. <sighs> so they don't have a way to up upgrade it unless I'm missing something here. Shaders. No, they don't. Okay, I, we should be all right. Let's let's just make it uh, universal render pipeline. I don't need it to blow in the wind or anything. So. IVD, IV normal map. Let's pray that this uh, looks good here. IBM, we need to set it to transparent. I don't know why it's white. The emission is turned on for some reason. Um, okay. Uh, also, we want to not preserve specular lighting. Good. <laughs> hey, Thomas is gonna win today. And I feel like we need a, a scale standard and then we'll just scale them all. Um, and also we'll, we'll adjust the color so that the color matches the game. And I know what a lot of you are thinking, Thomas, this, this doesn't look like it matches. Um, and you're right, it doesn't. And with asset flipping, that's the beauty of asset flipping. You can, uh, you can make things match by just going into Photoshop and tweaking some colors. Okay, that looks weird. This is a good one actually right here. This is kind of cool. So the reason I want Ivy is I want it to sort of hang almost as a decal from the top of the ceiling. Um, okay, so let's, yeah, let's take a look here. Okay, it's definitely too shiny. I also feel like it needs uh, some kind of drop shadow and we need to render the back faces as well. Okay. And we could probably scale that up a little bit. So the standard scaling is going to be four. So let's just do that to all the prefabs, four, four, four. And those by default, that one's freaking huge. What happened here? What the F? We'll delete that and pretend that didn't happen. Um, let's see. Yeah, this feels pretty good actually. We also need moss. Okay, way too shiny, obviously. Metallic map, what the F? It's like so intense. The, are the leaves made of metal? Um, we're gonna render, okay, it is rendering both face sides, so that stinks. Hmm. What is that, is that the normal map? Huh. I guess, I mean, hmm. Let's see it with lighting. That looks a little bit better actually. But remember guys, know your color palette. Like you know the back of your booty. Uh, let's open it in Photoshop 2024, I guess. Yeah, okay. So yeah, this is a TGA, which I hate. So we're gonna go ahead and save it as a freaking PSD. Jeez, I'm crow. Why would I want that? I'm gonna save it as a PSD. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and change the green to that color that we love. Yeah, like a dirty green. 
and then we're just going to do a full on drop here and desaturation. Save it. Then we go to Unity here. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. We could probably add some simplifying to it. And what? I, let's see how it looks in light, by the way. Let's take a look. When you shine the light on it, you see some problems. Some leaves are passing through the back. I think we don't need to render both faces. Hmm, that stinks. Gosh, I couldn't tell you guys. Uh, I think as long as it's against the wall, it's gonna be okay. And I feel like it needs more saturation, actually. terrible I think we're okay I think we're okay um, the smoothness I'm just gonna turn it all off okay so we have our ivy now and I think overall I think it'll do the job you just want to add that subtle texturing to various ceilings here like this right here this is what it's for y'all You could even grab one here, maybe put a big one. Look at that, see? This is what it's all for, y'all. Although I don't like the, it really should render both faces. F. Who knows what's going on here? I'm gonna change the workflow. I know that's a terrible idea. Um, but I just wanna see what rendering both faces looks like. For some reason, we're getting some weird, like why is it black on the back? Let's turn off the normal map. What? Why is it black on the back? This is called Twisted Tower. Why is that black on the back? Why can't I see through it? Does anyone know what that is? Blending mode. Oh, jeez. Alpha. Because the mesh is not double sided. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm going to tell Felipe not to stick things because he's going to be doing the set decorating. I'm just going to say, look, man, we got to put things. I don't like how some of them you can't see, but just put them like this, you know? This is an underground level, that's why we're doing this. Okay. So if I hit play here, we can take a look. I don't think players will be looking at leaves the whole game. Okay. Sorry, my daughter just put a note under my door. Oh, look guys, what do you think? I don't know, what does it say? Ta to Thomas with like a beautiful flower and trees. I love it. 
Okay, so let's take a look here and see. I love it. I think it looks good. I just wish. Ugh! It's driving me nuts. Both? I hate that. But whatever. There's only so much you can do, and so many things you should worry about. Okay. That's cool. We could even potentially add them to the ceiling, eh? see like we did this yeah we need some moss I kind of feel like they should be bigger, like five by five by five. Yeah. Cool. So far, guys, that was actually pretty productive. I, I, I feel like maybe let's let's increase the saturation here. Actually, I I feel weird that these leaves. I'm um, I'm considering increasing the saturation, but maybe even red. No, I don't know. One of you asked Thomas what happened to the dog game. Well, we got published. That's what happened. We got published for Twisted Tower and kind of had to put the dog game on hold while we prioritized this game. I feel like that looks better. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think the whole red thing is an issue. We need like a more brown. Especially for this level. I just, oh, it drives me nuts. I want to be able to see underneath those. Okay, so, very good, very good, very good. I, guys, I have to, man, I gotta pee. I gotta pee real bad, so thanks for watching, guys. This was a two hour stream, no. Was this a three hour stream? What? Okay, but we got a lot done, didn't we? We had a blast. If you want to learn what I do, and that includes Unity, or I also, in the program, we have a uh, lecturer who teaches about Godot or Unreal. But if you want to learn how to build a successful game studio, check out the link below. It's 50% off. And if you're like, well, this is some random course, it's actually very popular. Um, lots of incredible reviews. And by the way, if you're a student, let me know in the chat what you think about the program. But we have 4,000 students worldwide. This is Lord Grimm actually um, went full time because of the course, which is pretty awesome. They, Ended up getting a, a publisher. Um, I teach about everything I know. Um, making games, but also the art side of things. 3D and 2D art. Um, and actually, Felipe teaches. Uh, he's my 3D artist. He teaches uh, the 3D art program, and that's completely free. Um, and also, how to get six figures on Kickstarter. How to get six figures from a publisher. I've done all of that multiple times. So, it's cool because like it's taught by somebody who's actually doing what you guys want to do. Um, I can't think of a better program. I really can't. And that's not because I'm going to get your money. I will get your money, but um, it really is a good. It, it, it's a great course and 30 day money back guarantee. So if it's not for you, just email me and I'll immediately refund you. No questions asked. I won't even ask a question. Um, so check it out below. It's freaking huge. I love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. That was really really fun. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey. Thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which is really cool. 
This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.